this is specifically why I needed this model. This is the Yakima King Joe 2, specifically to carry two bikes, because I know I'm going to be doing that. And it has a quick adjustment, which is important because I'm not going to be using in the standard trunk configuration. This can go wide, so it works on hatchbacks, and it specifically fits over spoilers. And that's important because Mini has this, when you have a spoiler, unit that goes up top, and you just have a little bit of space here in between. So there's not much for any kind of traditional mount. And this model has these nice big foam bumpers that go on the inside. So the strap is going to go through. You just open the hatch, drop them in, and then you just pull them up and the foam just snugs up on the inside. So you don't have hooks, number one, putting pressure on the hatch, and number two, damaging your paint. doesn't matter if they're vinyl covered. They're going to put pressure back here. And then when it's outstretched, the top arms are going to be just leaning on the solid glass and the bottom one's down on the plate rather than down on the bumper. So again, no damage whatsoever. So I'm going to unbox this bad boy, see how it fits. All right, moment of truth. Let's open this one up. I have confidence that this time will be just fine, unlike Target. Who ships you the wrong stuff and doesn't care? These guys do. This came from High Mountain Sports. Got a really good deal online. Even better than the target price. Ooh. I got a code for 20% off. Sweet. I can probably use that in the future. Lots of tape. Did a good job of securing this. Just hard to do with one hand. All right. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. A lot different than the other model. The other model was very basic. I knew it was wrong as soon as I opened the box. Now we've got all the straps, supports, stuff specifically for hatchback and specifically for working with my car. You can see it's a little more complicated, but it should be easy to set up and it'll be quick to use once I do get it set up. So I'm going to run through this. This is going to take me a little bit here. I'll figure out how to do it, and then I'll take you through the how-to real quick. Stand by. So the first thing they want you to do is find your car in this list. And it's just a list of all the makes and models and whatnot. And they've got codes here for special notes. And it's just going to tell you. Let's this open real quick. Basic things about like where the straps go. And this is what I already looked up, so I knew it fit the Mini. Telling you where the top straps go, where the support goes, where the side straps go. And uh, basically just confirms that I'm going to use... I can use the hooks, but I don't want to. I'm going to use the big foam blocks right here. So they're kind of like barbells on a strap. And this goes inside the car, and then the strap feeds up through the gap. So this is inside, so it can't come out instead of having a hook on my paint. And then it's got side straps for stability that will go here, bottom straps that will go down here, and it's fine to use the hooks here on the actual door. I just don't want to do it right up here at the top of this thinner hinge. And then the main supports, pieces that hit, they're nice cushy rubber. Not going to leave any kind of marks. They're not hard at all. Bottom are going to go right here on the bottom of my uh, license plate frame, and the top one's up here. Let's get her on. All right, I've got it all set up here for the positions that are good for the car. You can see how it's going to sit. Oh, it's kind of heavy, but it's heavy duty. So you can see where the top ones are going to go, and then down there. What you have are these two giant hubs. They're really beefy. These red plastic tabs are locks. 
basically the two inner ones control the angle of the brackets that the bikes are going to sit on and the two outer ones control the angle between the top and the bottom arms. So basically you just pull this out and give it a little twist and then you can adjust this. It's just like a, a locking ladder. But once you have it set to your car, you don't need to adjust it at all. You just loosen the straps, take it on and off. Or, if you have multiple cars, this makes it really quick to just change the angles. So let's go ahead and put it on. Oh, the one thing it did, um, here's, here's the two bottom and side straps it comes with. What you get are two sets of loops, two ends, and it just loops through the center here. One goes to the bottom of the hatch, one goes to the side, and then you just cinch it up. This is a very beefy, nice cinch lock here, and it's got a soft rubber coating on everything, so there's no part that could possibly touch your car and cause any kind of damage. Very squishy and thick rubber. And then to make your adjustment, you just push this down and slides out. It's got a lot of knurling on there. So it's not going to let this nylon strap move at all. Very nice design. And then up at the top, we have two more of the same slip connectors. I took out the default ones, which are just the rubber coated hooks, because I don't want to bend or damage the top of my hatch. And we're just going to put in these. All right, let's get it on the car. So far, super easy. So inside the car, I've got the two little dumbbell attachments, and you just run the straps up. I'm going to go as wide as I can, so pretty close to the actual hinges here. The reason I'm doing this again is so I'm not putting all of that bending pressure on this little lip. Otherwise, let me grab one of the other straps here. Otherwise, what happens is this is just carrying all that pressure pulling down and pulling back. Whereas these are going to get stuck right here against the whole assembly. And you're not going to have any pressure on that little lip. So all we do now is close the latch or the hatch. Make sure we don't pinch anything. It's going to be loose. So it's not going to pinch the cables or anything like that. We just pull these up and we can see, let me turn this light off, and we should see the little guy come up to the roof here, there we go, bam, so now he's up there, straps coming through here, I feed the other end down through my spoiler, again just going as wide as I can, that's all the room I got, do the same thing over here. Bam. All right, those are in place. Now I can go ahead and put the unit on the car. I've got it hung here. All I did is support it with my body, and attach the upper straps. They're not tight, they're just holding it in place. Got these resting against the glass and positioned these. I put them all the way to the center here so they're fitting between the bolt mount so they're flat on the plate. And then all we have to do is put on the side straps. The big one with the latch goes here. And then the other end of it, which is looped through the hub here, goes down to the bottom. And we just snug this strap up. And it looks like this. You want to find the shortest distance so maybe your position will be a little higher or a little lower. Typically it's going to be the straightest line possible to this joint. That way this becomes as snug as possible and it can't loosen by moving one or the other. On my car that's pretty much right to the top here. That's the shortest distance between the hub and the end of the car. And then the other end just goes straight down from the hub. So now we just have to tighten up all the straps. 
Here's a little trick for cinching up just to get them perfect. First, make sure it's centered as you're doing it. Do it a little, little at a time. Don't crank the left side and then crank the right because it'll twist. But to get these straps, the side and bottom, as tight as possible, without breaking your car, of course, just put a little weight to simulate the weight of the bike and you'll see a little bit of slack come in the line. So that way you can get that very last little quarter inch. See this bending? You'd rather have it completely tight with the bike on there. So just put a little pressure on it, cinch the line at the same time, and you're done. If I wasn't doing this video, this would be on and off in literally 15 seconds now that I have it adjusted for my car. Just lift it on, you have to open the hatch to drop in your lines and that's really the only work. Now that these are in position, all I have to do to take it off the car is press this button and let it slack not even two inches and the hooks come right out and that's it. So now I'm just going to tie up these ends. I give you these nice rubber rings here so you can tie up your loose ends, but I actually have a lot of slack because this is obviously designed for other cars. What I could do is cut it, and if I did that, I would want to then melt the edge of it so it doesn't fray, but what I could also do is just simply tie it off out of the way. All you want to do is make sure that you don't have ends flapping in the wind hitting your paint. Okay, that's the, only, that's the only important thing. Or hitting your bikes. Just make sure you've got these tied up. doesn't really matter what you do with them. Just get them out of the way. And then we just put on the bikes. And this is the only thing I'm going to have to open the manual for. So far it's been all common sense. They give you these really cool looking, really thick, heavy duty rubber chain link fasteners. And they go over these little plastic nubs here. And obviously I know the bike frames go on here. I'm just not sure exactly what to do with this jobber do. It's like a two-part and it's on a swivel. There's two mounts and then this side just has one groove. So obviously I think the frame just rests on here. And this one, I'm really not sure yet. Maybe Maybe this snugs up, oh, that's what it does. Yeah, this snugs up to one of the down posts. So this is variable so it can match your frame angle. Yeah, see, I don't have to open the manual. It's really simple, yeah. So it clamps securely, very securely, around three frame points for each bike. All right, let's get the bike on. Here, obviously, the bike is in the carrier. What you want to do is put this L-shaped part up against both frame tubes. Now what you have to be careful of is on bikes like mine with exposed control cables sometimes they're gonna get in the way. For example on this down tube support here the strap comes around and it's gonna wrap right against this cable. So what you want to do is anytime you have a spot like that such as these here put slack in the cable. To do that, all I'm going to do is use the shifter. So it wants to shift. Obviously, it's not moved the chain because it's not pedaling, but now it's got slack. So now I can tightly cinch this without putting a kink and damaging the cable. And I'll do the same thing to the rear derailleur cable. And let's see this one here. That's fine. That's the one I just did. So yeah, just the uh, just the two shifter cables will have slack. My brake cable is fully sheathed, so I don't have to worry about pinching or kinking that one. That comes all the way through here in the plastic along the tube, so I don't have to worry about that one. And that's exposed only at the rear. So that's that. All I've got to do now is tighten these up figure out which one is going to be the correct position. These do not stretch much. They're very, very thick and tough. It's actually kind of hard to get these off. I just had them cinched at the end here 
to keep them out of the way and it was hard to get it off so you're just going to go where it's close and this one looks like it'll fit perfectly right there third from the back probably the same with this one yeah and a good fit on that one too and that'll be it all right let's now the last off. thing to do is whip the bike on there and of course if you have a second bike install that one too make sure everything like your bags and whatnot are zipped up ready to go so you don't have stuff falling all over the road and now we have to last check our straps because with the actual loaded weight they're probably going to have stretched a little bit more than when you did your test fit you just want to make sure there's no give Everything looks great. Not much weight on it with one bike, so not going to have that much of an effect. Beautiful. There it is, ready to go. Oh, one last thing I did forget is the tire strap, because you don't want your front wheel hitting your car. That's what this little guy here is for. I do wish they gave you a quick connect probably going to do something about that but all we do here is strap the wheel to the frame ah hold on there we go that's better just strap this little guy on here now they only have one of those in the box so I'm assuming that when you put on a second bike which is going to be reversed first bike always goes on with the chain facing out so you have the uh, correct tube angle thingy there and the second bike goes facing the opposite way so the front wheel would be over here and I'm assuming that you don't need that maybe because there's no room for it to flop around I don't know but uh, the instructions I did look it up and you're only supposed to have one of those straps in there so nothing's missing it's just the way it goes uh, anyway I'll throw on my wife's bike I guess and uh, see how that looks see if I need to put a second strap of my own on there or something Anyway, this has been the King Joe 2 on my 2005 Mini Cooper S with spoiler. It would fit exactly the same on real, really any of the Minis. This is probably the most restrictive. The other ones have more room and more options. Overall, really impressed. Paid, I think it was 120 from High Mountain Sports. Awesome experience there. Fast shipping, great price. Gave me a little coupon there that you saw, and they got it right. <laughs> it's the right product. Imagine that. So hard, isn't it, Target? Yeah. So there you guys go. See ya.